All right. Took me a while to find this box. It's been put up for many moons. So, some old stuff in here. Lots of old stuff in here. That's a 32. That'll be relevant to what we're doing. A couple of SCs. That looks like that's an ES model cluster. Mostly SC stuff. Yeah, we'll get... That's an ES. That's a GS. Okay. This is what we need. An SC cluster. So, two different SC clusters there. I don't think there's anything else we need other than maybe a faceplate. Got one without the motors, but it doesn't have the spreader on it. So, we will just go with what we've got. What is in here? A little bit of everything. Let's see, 400. There's the gauge assembly number if anybody needs it for temperature gauge. It's not in there anymore. But, uh, okay, let's get back to what we were doing. What I'm going to do is show you some backlight options for the SC. And that's exactly what we want. Those are the old uh, plexiglass covers for the experimental clusters way back in the day. That's an ES, I think. Yeah, ES or GS. I think it's GS. Okay, this will be what we need, though. We got what we need. Okay, so... Here's where we're at. I'm going to show you how technology has made everybody's life better with then versus now. So, you know what? That's an ES cluster face, too. We need a SC cluster face. ES, GS, ES. Well, do we have an SC? There's an SC. Okay. So, yeah, this junk, SC cluster face, that's what we want. Now, back in the day, we used to have to do a lot of work to get our SC clusters lit up. You would take the bulbs out, there's eight of them total, take those out, they would fire against these spreaders back here and distribute light. That light would get distributed into this panel, which is a diffuser panel. It kind of helps soften the light out, and uh, it would light up. So, what we had to do, there were no plug-and-play LEDs that you could put in this spot that would diffuse light. They would actually just simply go all over the place. Like, uh, it would come, sh like, straight up, and it would hit the diffuser in one spot, and it would light up just this one spot right there. And all this would be dark. New LEDs, new LED technology is great. Now we have LEDs that can distribute light 360 degrees. We did not have that back in the day. So here's a lesson for newer SC owners what the old school guys had to do. This is a 32 that was sold by Lextech Lighting Systems from uh, 03 to 09. And after Lextech was sold in 2009, I have no idea what Brandon did with it. So this is just going to talk about uh, Lextech 1.0 uh, and the workings of 1.0. Lextech 2.0, I don't know anything about. It wasn't anything that I uh, participated in. So this is the 1.0 design. And this is four LEDs. And to make these LEDs work... You can see the tops of them are shaved off and the back of them is affixed to a resistor and of course none of this can touch so these had to be spaced apart to where they wouldn't touch that was kind of a pain in the butt to make sure that none of this touched you can see we're working some really tight tolerances here this stuff is right up against each other and it would come over, the negative would come over, get real close to the positive side. It, it was uh, not fun to build these because what you would have to do is you'd have to take 32 LEDs, you'd have to shave the tops off of them, 
with uh, like a Dremel or some other type of sander. So after you shaved the tops off of the LEDs to diffuse the light, you had to go through the trouble to put resistors on all 32 of them. And then they had to be bent in a very specific pattern. You'll notice that all of these are the same way. They all come and they bend uh, around and they make contact. They come up, then they go down. On the other side, each of them have to be bent to face a specific way. And they have to be kept apart from each other so none of those touch. So it was a real pain in the butt. You're looking at about 40 hours of work per cluster. It took uh, several days just to do the backlight. And uh, by the hour, maybe two bucks an hour to do this. I mean, probably not that, but close. It, it was an underpaid skill, let's put it that way. So it was a real pain in the butt to make all of these LEDs diffuse properly so you didn't get light spots you know you had to have proper distribution of the light well that was then and this is now we have new leds uh, that have come into play in the form of strips and these strips even have remotes you can turn them on where's the remote eye for this thing it's down there and you can mount this remote eye up on your dash so that you can hit it change the color you can go solid white, you can go red and green, blue, you can make them purple, yellow, orange, whatever. So you could make this any color you want to. You can make them cycle, you can make them dance. I mean, technology these days is awesome. We didn't have that back in the day, we had to do this crap. So, now that we've got the strips, you can take these strips... You can run them in the cluster around like this. They don't have to face up. They need to face like this against the wall. And you can run these strips. They'll tuck right behind those spreaders. And you can run them around in between all these spreaders like this. And run them down. And snip them off because every LED, there's a snip point here. Let's see, this, this particular one is every three LEDs. Uh... So there's a point where you'll see where you can snip these off, cut them off, and put your hot and your ground there, and just attach them to where the bulbs normally go, like we did before. And you've got perfect backlight. Uh, see if I can get, let me turn the light out. Look at that. You've got perfect distribution of light all around through here. So no spots, it's absolutely perfect. Excellent backlight. This is an option we never had. And you can change the color of it. And even better, these LEDs only cost about $13. So this is a $13 solution. It takes five to 10 minutes to actually wire in because you're only making two connections, one for this side, one for that side. And you've got yourself backlight and selectable colors. And it does not spot. If you put it in like I showed you, you'll have absolutely perfect backlight every time. This was definitely something that I would have liked to have had 10 years ago. Uh, but we didn't. So instead of spending your whole life 40 hours trying to get this backlight in and shaved and diffused and resistors and all that crap. Now it's just a strip and two connections. Let me show you what you do over here this is positive this is negative the resistor side is negative so you're going to hook your positive here you're going to hook your negative here that's the power for this cluster on this side as you can see it's not all the same if you'll notice some of these are facing different directions that's because this cluster flips polarity on some of the holes so you want to grab it over here where you know that it's positive and negative and over here same way positive negative these two outer holes are the same so you know that if you put the positive side of your led here and the negative side of your led here you're good to go so you don't got to worry about anything else but those connections now of course if you got a five speed you can just run this strip all the way across 
This is for automatics, because you'll notice.